Well, when our community was founded, it was founded in the late 1800s. And during that period, the whole church, all people who were believing in Christ, were immersed in this sense of being missionaries. So our community was born in this period of a missionary zeal, but what happened was for Father Paul, he was immersed in what he understood St. Francis's missionary sense to be. So you don't really have to go too far away to be a missionary. You can simply be where you are and be a missionary. Father Paul felt the desire that no one was to be left out. People, especially the voiceless, needed a voice. So he responded, and if we could, we would send them. The strange part maybe is telling the story is he often did it to the point that it was detrimental for us because we didn't have the people, but he sent them anyway. So he sent them to places where they simply needed to go. So some of the places the friars have been have been like, for example, Hereford, Texas in the Panhandle. It was kind of in the middle of nowhere, so to speak, and there was a group of migrant farm workers who were in need of some sort of pastoral care. We can look, for example, today, a modern example would be St. Odelia's in L.A., a small parish, perhaps, that just needs a little extra help. St. Odea is a, a unique parish in the sense, first parish that the friars have staffed that is primarily uh, Hispanic or Latino. Most of my parishioners are from Mexico. The second biggest group are Salvadorans, and the third are Guatemalans. The great part are first generation, and then their children, you know which is really a crucial thing, to make sure they have a good education and uh, a proper in integration into society. Dios Todopoderoso y Eterno, por Cristo nuestro Señor, el cual, compadecido del estradillo de los hombres, quiso nacer de la Virgen. What I like most about San Edilias is the community. I really like how we work together to provide a good environment for the people that come to Mass. They try to get us into like what they're doing, so I like helping every Sunday. I would say the greatest challenge is probably um, economic, you know, trying to survive. It's very expensive to live in Los Angeles and be able to, to feed your, your children and also pay your rent, those type of basic things. I've been here 12 years, and I've seen, you know, many, many times where the, the child really wants to study and, and, and get ahead, and it, it pays well. It's really a, a good thing. What do you do, teaching? No, I'm a teacher's assistant for the time. Teacher's assistant? Yeah. Okay, yeah. good, good. The joy of the parish is to see young people kind of assume a, a position in society through, through education, through hard work. It's really uh, what we bring, I think, to this little parish in, the, in this part of Los Angeles. One of the ways all of us are led is by somebody who's given us example. And one of the people obviously we turn to is Francis, St. Francis. So when we heard the Pope took on the name Francis, well for all Franciscans, their immediate response was how wonderful, how beautiful, because he understood in the same way what Francis was calling us to, the way that Francis showed us God. And it calls us to be a person who brings unity, peace, healing to people who need it so desperately. If you're going to be Catholic, you have to go out. You know, it's, it's constantly going out, it's constantly doing for others. We fit them in just these two? No, no there's three. All those things have to do with the poor, 
They have to do with outreach. Actually, like Father Paul did in the beginning of St. Christopher's Inn, taking care of those who can't take care of themselves. Every Saturday we prepare over 3,200 brown bag lunches. Plus we serve a hot meal twice a month. So on average per year, we're preparing over 150,000 brown bag lunches. It's always been important to us that our children learn what it's like to be charitable and to serve. The Friars always seem to be very supportive. There are opportunities, and I think that they kind of push those along, you know, to, to give us ways and to support ways where here at our church, you know, we can actually give back. We have missed two Saturdays in all this time, and one was an ice storm and one was Christmas Day. Other than that, we're here, the rain, the snow, the heat, whatever. Weather doesn't affect whether people are hungry or not. One of the things that I always enjoyed the most with the Friars was their openness to other Christian churches. We do different activities over a week and then it, it ends with a prayer service with different faiths here at St. Andrews. That has really led me to make Brown Bag Ministry as ecumenical as I can possibly make it. I'm with uh, Potter's Hand Bible Church and I've been doing this for three years. It's really open to a lot of faiths. You don't have to be a member of the parish here to come and join. I really like that. It's really uh, an expression of love of neighbor and doing for the neighbor. Those are the things that I think that we do, and we do well. Today, one of the things that really has excited us is Pope Francis's call to be more aware of the interreligious dimension of our world. And you'll see that some of the experts that are called on happen to be friars. Father Elias Malin is one of the persons that's considered an expert in interreligious dialogue. Someone said years ago that the only alternative to discussion is violence. And so the alternative, uh, which we see all too often to dialogue, uh, is either oppression or violence or war. One of the co-founders of Catholic Near East Welfare Association was Father Paul Watson. We are here to build peace between peoples, and we start with religions. We start first with our own religion, that's called Christian unity, peace between the churches, and we move out to the broader world, dialogue with religions so that people can live together. We're looking for a world without religious and cultural violence. In northern Iraq, where ISIS is and where the Christians and others uh, have been driven out, uh, we deal with the human needs. We try to deal educating people here in the United States about what is going on there and to help Catholics take a part in, in helping their fellow believers throughout the region. What I like best about being a fire of the atonement is that I really think we have a ministry that makes a difference. Father Paul received the charism of atonement, the atonement of reconciliation, of bringing things together that shouldn't be apart. And that spirit, it seems, wherever we go or when people get involved with us, they become people that start to make it a part of their own lives, be it working in the international field with ecumenism, be it simply realizing that there's somebody hungry now, not in the future, now. They make a bag lunch today. They go and help someone today. It's not something that's about the future, it's about living it today. So we understand ourselves that the charism is not something we own, we possess, we keep hidden away. It's something we give away. And as we give it away to other people, they join us in bringing that sense of atonement, oneness, healing, reconciliation, whatever it needs to be uh, present in this world.